Hey, Mark. Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay, this, I swear, this is going to be easier. I'm ready for the sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> I keep saying how much easy. Well, because when I look at it, it seems like it's going to be so easy, but I forgot how much goes into numbers. There's so many. <laughs> I, okay, you guys should be so proud because when I speak Chinese, I can say, like, first, second, like, the, like, ordinal numbers um, and cardinal numbers, but like fractions <laughs> in Chinese, it is so complicated. I'm like, And Spanish numbers I always felt were pretty hard, and my sister said French numbers are like impossible. I gave up. She tried to tell me, and I was like, whatever, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> what, about, what about you? Do you think English numbers are complicated, or are they pretty simple for you? No, I think it's it's pretty simple. I think the problem is that we know the numbers, but when we have to use them, I mean, for large numbers, it's kind of tricky. But it's fun. We had a lot of fun. <laughs> this is the thing that I think is so hard with numbers because all of us use the exact same numbers. Now, when we're writing, like for instance, hey, welcome back, Chloe. Hi. If Chloe were writing me a note in Korean, she's going to be using different characters that we don't have. So I'm not going to look at them and try to pronounce them in English because I don't even know what they mean. Yeah. And the same thing with English. We have a, le a writing system, letters, that we share with other people, but we don't spell the words the same. So we don't look at it and want to pronounce it the way we pronounce it. But numbers are universal. We all use the same numbers, the same yeah. writing system for numbers. So when we see it, we naturally want to pronounce it in our own language. Yeah. Because... And so, like, in Chinese, when I see 1,420,000 and 2, that's how I want to say it, but in Chinese, it goes by, okay, like, tens of millions, and then the 1 million, wow. and then, like, tens of thousands, and then the 1,000. Okay, for example, let's see, type a number in. Um, Okay, this number, 144,000. In English, I would say 100, and then the 44 thousands. In Chinese, you say 14 ten thousands, and then 4,000. Same to Korean. Yes, I know. <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> so, I understand the challenge of trying to switch up the way you say numbers because when I'm going the other way, I can say all those English numbers easy. But when I'm trying to say Chinese numbers, I am I have to look at it like I'll see a number, I'm like, hold on. <laughs> I would I wish they would write it out in characters because then I could at least just read it. <laughs> when it's numbers, I'm like, um ooh, E one, no. Um, I oh, forget it. I usually just <laughs> I make the other person say it because I can't get it. So that is numbers are fun. They're fun and confusing. So this class way easier. This is so <laughs> so much. It's gonna be so easy. <laughs> okay. So before we get into it, we're doing pronunciation. So that's always we're doing compound nouns. So that's not too bad. And for our discussion topic, we're going to be talking about not just chewing ice, which is our basic topic, but weird food cravings and the health, the health, um, what's the word, dangers that it can cause. So, like, a lot of times when you're craving something really weird, it's because your body is either lacking in something or it has mm -hmm. too much of something. So chewing ice is actually a sign of a lot of different health disorders. So we're going to talk about that. So to get started for our warm-up, I want you guys, especially um, Chloe, I've not met you before, so I want to do a little bit of introduction. 
I want to do like where you're from, mm -hmm. like what do you do for fun, and you can tell me anything you want about yourself, and then what is the weirdest food craving you have ever had? So that's our that's our warm up question. The weirdest uh, craving. It doesn't even have to be food. What is the weirdest thing you've ever wanted to eat that you've had a craving for? Oh, I just um, a little bit. So, start? Yeah, go ahead. You can start. Yeah, um, my name is Chloe and I'm from Korea. I'm a university student and my major is business administration. And now I'm doing my internship in marketing department. Cool. And yeah, the weirdest food that I tried was rabbit. You had rabbit? Uh huh. What did you think? Um, actually, I didn't want to try it because rabbits are so cute. How they can are. I eat them? <laughs> yeah, but it tastes so good. I feel guilty, <laughs> but I like it. That's yeah. hilarious. Okay, uh -huh. you know what? People eat rabbit in the United States. Not everywhere, yeah. but they do uh, eat it. Oh, yeah, I ate rabbit in the United States. I'm sure you did because that yeah. we eat rabbit and squirrel and possum <laughs> and frog and deer and all types of stuff. Not everywhere. It just depends on where you live. Uh -huh. But yeah, I've never had rabbit, so oh, you should try. <laughs> you like it? <laughs> okay, I'll think about it. <laughs> okay, um, it's very nice to meet you. Yeah, me too. And your English is fantastic. How long have you been learning? Um, we have English class in elementary school students, mm -hmm. so I started from elementary school, but actually in Korea we usually focus on grammar and reading, so it's really hard to speaking and listening. Well, you're doing a very good job. You're, yeah. You have a very good accent. It's very clear. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you keep try. going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, let's see. Adelton, how are you? Adelton, are you still there? Can you hear me? Adelton, can you hear me? Adelton, can you see me? <laughs> That's actually a good song when I'm not singing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually quite a pretty song. Okay, I, Adelton, I have a question. What does the what does that mean on your picture? It says "oi" and then I can't read Portuguese. Is that can 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 help me out. <laughs> Ser criticado. What does that mean? I'm just curious. Okay, Alison, I'll be here whenever you're ready to chat with me. Don't be afraid. I am your friend. <laughs> mm -hmm. So whenever you want to join in, as always, I'm here. Okay, Mark, can you tell us, tell, introduce yourself and tell me what is the weirdest thing you've either ever eaten or had a craving for, like you just really wanted it even though it was weird? Okay, I'm Mark. I'm from Brazil. I'm a teacher, I teach Portuguese language, language and I'm also a DJ in my free time. Cool. Uh, Mark, you teach Portuguese? I knew you were a teacher, I didn't know what you taught. Yeah, I teach Portuguese. Well, oh. I need your help. What does that say? <laughs> what does this picture say? <laughs> I don't even know how to pronounce it. I need a, I needed a Portuguese teacher like two seconds ago. <laughs> Which picture are you talking about? Adelton. It says oi on the top part. And then it says quer oi, ser... Quer, quer ser criticado, I think. Uh, do you want to be criticized? Oh. <laughs> Thank you. I, well, because Adelton, you've been in all my classes, and I keep seeing the picture. I'm like, what does that mean? I just keep staring at it. Because I, I took Spanish, so I'm like, 
I, you know, if I was translating it in Spanish, it would be pretty much <laughs> that. But I'm like, I know Portuguese is different. So I'm like, what does that mean yeah, in Portuguese? Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Mark. I'm sorry. I interrupted you. Go on. Yeah. So I'm a teacher and a DJ. And I think that the, the, the word that thing that I've ever had, I used to have it when I was a kid. It's a chicken that is made with the blood. <laughs> a chicken, you know. A, a chicken that, what with the blood? The blood of chicken, you know, a chicken that we use to make. When we do that, we use as an, one of the ingredients is his blood. Oh, that's you know, actually it's... really common in Asia. They. Yeah. But not, I don't think it's usually um, pig, it's not usually chicken, it's pig. Like in Taiwan, they have it like in congealed, congealed cakes. Uh, yeah, kind, kind of sausage or something. No, Maybe it's just the blood. blood. And they just put it in like <laughs> soup for nutrition and for flavor. Yeah. But it's, it, you know, it's, that's really awkward and so I don't have it anymore. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't eat blood, but I know they eat, uh, they eat it a lot of places. In some places it's really common. Um, okay, well, first... I'm Stephanie. Hello. <laughs> That's mostly for you, Chloe, because I, I know Mark and I know <laughs> Adelton. Um, I'm from the United States. I live in Ohio, but I'm originally from the East Coast. So if I start talking super fast, you'll have to forgive me. I'm trying not to. Um, let's see. I've been, I've been teaching for about four years. Um, I also, which I don't know if you guys know, originally I went to school to be a hairdresser. I was a beautician. Wow. And I loved it. Like, teaching, doing hair are like the two best jobs on earth if you like people. Because both <laughs> jobs, you get to talk to people all day and be creative. And yeah. I, so it's really fun work. I loved it. And mm. the weirdest thing I've ever eaten, so not had a craving for, I was just served this was, well, it's a toss-up. I ate monkey. Oh. Yes, I did. Oh, how is it? <laughs> it tastes like pork. <laughs> oh. <gasps> it was barbecued. It was actually really good. I didn't know it was monkey while I was eating it. I didn't find out until later. <laughs> wow. And then I, when I was just in Taiwan, somebody gave me um, a thousand-year-old egg. Mm. A thousand-year-old egg? It's a delicacy. It's not actually an old egg. Well, it is, but not a thousand years. What they do is they take an egg, either a duck egg or a chicken egg, uh -huh. and they put it in sulfur and ash and different kinds of minerals, and they yep. let it ferment. Oh. And let me tell you, I have a stomach of steel. I can eat anything. Even if I don't uh -huh. like it, I can eat it. That, I took a big bite out of it, uh -huh. and... I thought I was going to be sick. And <laughs> it was somebody, was they had me over, and they were just being, like, super hospitable. And those things are expensive. So I didn't want to be rude because they were mm -hmm. being so nice. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't eat it. <laughs> I tried. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I need water. <laughs> and I don't, I have eaten so many weird things. I don't uh -huh. get sick. That one, uh -huh. my stomach was like, no, 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 no. Wow. Yeah, mm. so that is probably the weirdest thing I've ever eaten. I don't really get, I do get weird cravings. I like, okay, <laughs> we have pickled hot peppers in America. It's like jalapenos. Uh -huh. I actually have some in my fridge right now. So it's in a jar, and they've been pickled. Oh. When I was a kid, I used to eat all of them out of the jar, oh. and then I would get, like, Tabasco sauce and pour it in, and <gasps> pop, and pepper, and I'd shake it up, and I would drink it. <laughs> <laughs> so when I say stomach of steel, I mean stomach of steel. <laughs> wow. And that was probably my weirdest craving. I would crave that. Well, that and Cheetos. I used to eat Cheetos and grapes. I like mm -hmm. them. I like to eat them together. <laughs> like, Cheetos? Cheetos? Cheetos and grape? Yeah. So I would have a bowl of grapes and a bowl of Cheetos, uh -huh. and I would eat them together. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that was probably a weird craving. I don't know what my body was missing that it wanted <laughs> Cheetos and grapes, but it wanted Cheetos and grapes. 
<laughs> now you know that I'm weird, I eat monkey, and I love to do hair. That's pretty much me all summed up. That's me in a nutshell. Okay, so now that we all know each other and the weird things we've eaten, let's get mm -hmm. to our pronunciation. If I can find the tab. Come back. There it is. Okay. Let me... Okay, let me screen share this with you. Some of the pronunciation is better if you guys can see it, and some of it's better if I can see you, but this one's more of a... I want you guys to be able to see the lesson. Okay. All right, can everybody see the screen? Yes. Okay, good. And I already forgot if this is a... This is high... Is this high beginner or intermediate? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, don't I, I don't think I looked. It's intermediate. Okay. <laughs> I am not a good teacher. I should be. Okay. I'm not a good student. <laughs> I'm just like starting my class, not even paying attention to what kind of class I'm teaching. Okay, so since it's intermediate, that means that you guys can do the reading. In, high, in beginner and high beginner classes, I have to do the reading. So, haha, mm -hmm. -ha, this is an intermediate class. <laughs> so, Chloe, can you start off and read where it says lesson? Read uh, that paragraph. All right. Lesson. In English, you can combine words together to make new words and new ideas. When you combine two or more nouns, those nouns become a compound noun. These compound nouns have different intonation. There are other combinations that you can use to form compound nouns, such as adjective plus noun, noun plus verb, and preposition plus verb. Please refer to one of Colingo.com's compound noun grammar classes for all of the combinations. Okay, thank you. Okay, so tons of combinations, but we're, we're not going to really talk about all of that. We're just going to talk about how, how we say it. Mm-hmm. So when you combine nouns, or when you have a compound noun, the way we pronounce it does change. So it says, um, actually, Mark, can you read the rule? Yeah. The intonation for the beginning word in a compound noun goes up. The intonation for the last word in a compound noun goes down. All right. So up and down. So our voice is going to go up, down, up, down. And that's pretty much for all compound nouns. So let's listen to some examples of compound nouns. Notice how the intonation goes up and then down. Alarm clock, ice cream, coffee cup, beach house. OK, can you guys hear that? Surfboard, English teacher, internet yeah. cafe. If there is an up and down rhythm to compound mm -hmm. nouns. If if I were doing it the other way, it would be alarm clock, ice cream, coffee cup, <laughs> beach house. <laughs> it would sound a little funny. So forward. Okay, so we're going up and then down. Never flat, never alarm clock, ice cream, coffee cup. It's always up, down, up, down, alarm clock, ice cream, alarm coffee cup. Ice cream, coffee cup. Yeah, like we're singing. Sir, for English teacher, half life, that time. <laughs> okay, up, down, up, down. And this is really good to know because we use a lot of compound nouns. Mm -hmm. And if you know the rhythm for those words, it's going to help you with the whole rhythm for your English. You're going to, between that and linking and joining sounds, if you can get that, those three things, you will sound completely native because that's where our rhythm is. And then get your like lilting intonation, skeptical intonation. You're gonna sound like a native English speaker. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, I'm just gonna do the ones that are in screen. Chloe, can you read the words on the left? And then Mark, I want you to read the words on the right. Um, with freedom. Huh? Can you can you say? Number 10, please, for me. Sure. Input. Oh, input. Trunk full, sunset, dry cleaning, underworld, checking. Very good. Those are perfect. Okay, Mark, 
Ooh, right side. Leftovers, Mastermind, Stepchild, Soundtracks, Rainbow, Runaway. Mark, those are perfect, except I want you to go back to number 27. Stepchild. Nope. Stepchild. Okay. Child. There it is. Very good. Okay, <laughs> so you were putting emphasis on the second yeah, part. Yeah, I was. Okay, very good. But you corrected it. And the, that last time was absolutely perfect. Um, Adelton, are you still there? Would you like to try some of the words? I can't see if he's if he's there because my oh you are still there. Okay, Adelton, if you if you would like to give this a try, just let me know. There's no you can sit there and just enjoy the class for as long as you'd like, but if whenever you want to participate or join in, just say something. Okay. All right. It says practice. Listen to and repeat some of the example sentences. Go slowly and try to be very clear with the intonation drop. Examples. Number one, internet cafes charge a lot of money. Number two, ice cream is perfect on summer days. So when it comes in another sentence, and I'm sorry, in, in the sentence you go up, down, and then level out. Internet cafes charge a lot of money. Ice cream is perfect on summer days. So you're going to go up, you're going to come back down to a natural pitch, and then you're going to keep it level. Okay, so Mark, can you do number three? Okay. I don't need, I don't need an hour clock because I, will, because I wake up naturally. Okay. Read it for me one more time because there was some feedback. Okay. I don't need a melon bar because I wake up naturally. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. Every no, time you, you say a, yeah. a long time, it is perfectly silent until you get to the comment on that. <laughs> I you think somebody is messing with me. <laughs> <laughs> Every That's time that I try to improve my English, the dogs start barking. Uh, <laughs> it's like, I don't need a... <laughs> That's what I got. Okay. Can I try again? <laughs> you can try. Let's see. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. I don't need an alarm clock because I wake up naturally. Okay. I heard you that time. All right. <laughs> so just say, the, just say the compound noun by itself. Alarm clock. Okay. Alarm clock. Okay. Alarm clock. Alarm, Alarm clock. Alarm clock. Yeah, clock. so it's it's Alarm. not actually your intonation that was wrong. Your intonation was fine. It was where you're putting the emphasis on the word alarm. Yeah. The emphasis comes on the second syllable, alarm. Alarm. Not alarm. 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 Okay, very good. Chloe, can you do number four? Sure. The bathroom has a good structure. Okay, one more time. <laughs> the bathroom bathroom has yeah. a good structure. Very good. Okay. That was very good. Sometimes I like to hear it twice because, mm -hmm. okay, <laughs> sometimes we get things right accidentally but never twice. <laughs> so if I ask you you're to repeat right, it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't assume that you said it wrong. I just want to make sure you're saying it right because you understand and not you're saying it right because that was a guess. So right. I'm not, I'm not happy to repeat words. Okay. <laughs> Mark, number five. Okay. We gave the left top. We gave the leftovers. Leftover. Is that right? Leftovers. leftovers. Okay. We gave okay, the so leftovers. <laughs> Really quick, when you guys are doing this intonation, that up, down, up, down, the up part is very well pronounced. That down part is kind of dropped. We give the leftovers. 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 Okay. We're not putting a lot of emphasis on the overs. You don't really 
you kind of soften all the sounds leftovers. The, it's almost like your voice is drifting away. It's like left, blah, 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 blah. blah. Nobody cares about the end. <laughs> Surf, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so don't, okay. if you emphasize that second part too much, you're not going to be able to drop your tone enough. So we gave the leftovers to the beggar. So if I say, if I say we gave the leftovers to the beggar, you hear what I mean? If I'm saying overs too strongly, I can't yeah. drop my intonation. We gave the leftovers to the beggar. So make sure you're not emphasizing the last part. Okay. Um, Mark, read number six. He bought a new surfboard. Very good. That was perfect. All right, Chloe, number seven. The movie soundtrack is cool. Wow. Okay, so I am trying really hard not to look at the screen while you guys are reading so I can just hear it. That's the best way for me to, to tell if it sounds natural, and you guys mm -hmm. are doing a great job. If I'm looking, then I'm focusing too much on watching you hit the right tones. Okay, mark number eight. Sandy, is, uh, uh, you see? You see? <laughs> Sandy is a stepchild. Those dogs do not want you to learn English. <laughs> They've got it out for you, man. <laughs> they are practicing with me. <laughs> are they? Good job, dogs, but your tone is completely off. It's, it's just all high. It's not, there's no dropping. They need work. They are not ready for intermediate. <laughs> okay. Chloe, can you do number nine? Oh, uh, Stephanie, can you read number seven, please? Sure. The movie soundtrack is cool. Oh, the movie soundtrack is cool. All right, thank you. <laughs> no problem. Um, number nine? Yeah. The kids want to go outside to see the rainbow. Okay, do rainbow again. Rainbow. 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 Yeah. So that's that drifting off thing again. So rainbow. if you say rainbow, that's still too rainbow. much emphasis on bow. Rainbow. Uh -huh. Rainbow. Very good. That was perfect. Rainbow. Uh -huh. <laughs> so when we have compound nouns, we really just stop caring about the second part. We just don't uh -huh. even care about it. It's not important anymore. So we kind of just drop it. It's like art uh -huh. class. Rainbow. Soundtrack. Soundtrack. Yeah. So up down. Rainbow. Rainbow. Up down. That's what we're doing. C. Okay. Let's. Let. Where are we practicing now? Okay. Make your own sentences from the list of compound nouns above. We are not going to do that right now because we're <laughs> not going to have time. Okay. Listen to the definition. Can you say which compound noun fits the definition? All right. This is a card that you can use to pay for things. Credit what is card. It? Yes. <laughs> you knew that one way too fast, young lady. <laughs> you heard card and pay. You're like, sweet, credit card. <laughs> okay, so say credit card for me. Credit card. Okay, too much emphasis on card. Can you drop credit it? Credit card. Better. Credit card. Credit card. Yeah. We're not even really even saying card. We're almost just saying the word car because we care about it that little. Uh -huh. Credit card. Credit card. Okay. Number two. This is a person who teaches biology. Here's our list up here. Okay, the answer to that question is not in that list. <laughs> so you guys just tell me somebody you know that teaches biology. Biology teacher? Bio. <laughs> I would think either biology teacher or science teacher. Any of those. Because that, that was not, the answer was not there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, this is chocolate with milk in it. Ice cream. Hot chocolate. Hot chocolate, yes. 
I guess chocolate ice cream, sure, but that would be more like milk with chocolate in it. Ice cream would. Like chocolate mm -hmm. ice cream is more milk with chocolate in it. Chocolate with milk in it is hot chocolate. Uh huh. Mmm, hot chocolate. I want some hot chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> this sounds so good. Have you ever had mint hot chocolate? What is that? Mint hot chocolate? No. It is amazing. Mint no. hot chocolate? Mint hot chocolate. So it's got the real sweetness of the of the chocolate, but then it's got mint in it. It tastes like um like a York peppermint patty. Oh, so good. oh I really want some mint hot chocolate right now. Okay. Ah. I see. Uh, you mean the mint? Like peppermint? Yeah, like peppermint. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that. <laughs> oh, so good. Okay. <laughs> I'm totally getting off topic. <laughs> okay, this is a machine that washes your dishes. Dishwashers. Very good. Can you drop the washer part? Dishwashers. Very good. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, you play soccer with this ball. Soccer ball. Yes, but drop your drop that second part. So soccer ball. Yes. Okay, so I know it takes a little bit more concentration, uh -huh. but you really got to just, it's like you're saying a word and then you're kind of just stopping, even though you're not done. Soccer ball. It's like, I don't really care about ball. Soccer ball. <laughs> ball. It's really difficult. Soccer, soccer, ball. soccer ball. Yeah, because when, you, when you're thinking too much about the whole word soccer ball, you, mm. you're not dropping it. So it's like you start off soccer, I'm done. <laughs> I'm just done. I'm done talking. <laughs> and that's that's the sound we're getting. That's why it drops. It's like you know where I'm going with this. I don't need to finish. Uh, Soccer ball. You know. Soccer ball. Soccer ball. Very good. Okay. You can put your books in one of these bags. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Give the hand. <laughs> 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 oh, this might be something that's only, I don't know if this is only American, book bags. Book bags. Yeah, or a backpack. It depends on where you're from. Some oh, people say backpack. a book bag, oh, some yeah, people say yeah. backpack. It's a, it depends on where you live. Backpack. Mm-hmm. We got them all. Oh, the answer was milk chocolate. Milk chocolate. Milk chocolate. You see, you both were wrong. We were wrong. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm, I am I am ashamed. I hang I hang my head in shame. <laughs> okay. Do you guys feel like you have a good understanding on compound nouns? Um, Stephanie. Yes. For number two, where mm -hmm. is the emphasis on biology? Bi biology. Biology. Bio oh. Biology. 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 Oh. Yeah. Biology. Oh, so that even though I O can sometimes be a diphthong where you combine, for mm -hmm. example, this one we're pronouncing each vowel separately. Biology. So the emphasis falls on the second syllable, the A. Ah. Biology. Mm -hmm. Biology. Biology. Yeah. There is actually a Colingo class where they talk about um uh, syllables and where the emphasis should fall. That's a good class to take because English, if you, <laughs> if we are like mimicking English, it sounds like this: blah 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 because that's our rhythm. Da 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 da. And there is actually a way to learn that rhythm. And if you can speak English in that same rhythm, we're going to understand everything you're saying. So you got to get your blah, 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 blah. So depending on how many syllables there are in a word, that's how you know where the stress should fall. Yeah. So take that class. It's super helpful. Challenge. Challenge. Yeah. It's hard. My yeah, my language is even, you know, in English, you know, you have this up and down all the time. Yeah, Chinese is very standardized. There are actual tone marks so that you know when to go up and when to go down. And now that's hard because 
Um, Chinese has five tones. Well, Mandarin. Mandarin Chinese has five tones. You have high and even, rising, falling, then rising, falling, and then neutral. But each sing each character has its own tone. So it's a lot of memory. Chinese is hard because you have to memorize. Okay, I see this character. Is that high? Is it rising? But if you know which one it is, it's very easy to say. Mm -hmm. English is hard because it changes because you have, for example, biology. Biology, the, it falls in the biology. second syllable. But it, if you have the word biologist, you're technically, according to the rules, the stress should fall on the third syllable, but because this word is biology, we don't change the stress. We still say biologist. Because of that particular biology. suffix, we don't change the stress. So there's a lot of r weird rules for pronouncing English. Mm -hmm. So take all the pronunciation classes, they are so, especially the ones about linking sounds, joining sounds, syllables, all of that. Take them a lot until you get it. And mm -hmm. Okay, this is going to sound really bizarre, but mimicking is amazing. Yeah, get, like, I do that. Get your favorite book on tape or anything. Something, Just something that people are reading out loud and do what's called shadow reading. And that's when you read right behind the person. So, for example, mm -hmm. um, Chloe, can you read the first sentence? I'm going to shadow read you, so don't let it freak you out, okay? <laughs> All right. This is a card is that a you card can that use, you to, can pay use to pay for things. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> you see how closely I'm following you? Uh -huh. Okay, now you try to keep my pace. Are you ready? Yes. This is a card that you can use to pay for things. This is a person who teaches this biology. Is a person who teaches this is biology. chocolate milk with. <laughs> this is a machine. Okay, do you, do you see how hard that is when it's not your native language? Yeah. The more yeah. you do that, the more you are going to learn to speak at a natural pace. Uh -huh. So yeah. actually, I tried this on Tat. <laughs> yeah. Did you? <laughs> I can't breathe while I'm mimicking so fast. <laughs> I do this in Chinese. It's hilarious. <laughs> like, uh, 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 no. And even if, if you get left behind, just catch up with them wherever they are. Yeah. If you can manage to keep the same pace, for example, uh -huh. I want you guys to both try this before we move on. I'm totally off topic, but I don't care. Okay. I'm going to read these six sentences. I want you to try to keep up with me. Right. And I'm not going to read them super fast, but I want you to keep my natural English pace, okay? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Mark, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. This is a card that this you can use to pay for things. This is a person who teaches biology. This is chocolate milk. This is a chocolate with milk in it. This is a machine that washes your dishes. You play soccer with this box. You can put your books in one of these bags. You can put your books in one of these bags. <laughs> you guys are awesome. <laughs> I don't okay. know what. Uh, I usually I do that with na 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 na. You know, just trying to copy the, the melody. <laughs> just gonna try with words. <laughs> yes, and Mark, it shows because honestly, you guys both have fantastic pronunciation, and I really mean that. And I'm I'm not just saying I'm your teacher. You both have managed to get the rhythm, which is a hard mm -hmm. thing to do. Right. It's actually really funny because in Chinese, I've been told by I don't know how many Chinese speaking people that mm -hmm. my tones are always off, but I somehow manage to have the rhythm of Chinese. I just speak in the rhythm. And I think it's mm -hmm. probably because I lived in Taiwan, so I heard it all the time. You hear mm -hmm. someone's rhythm all the time, you're going to start using it. Oh. And, when I'm around British people or Australians, I start going, this is a card that you can use. Because they do that. That's more Australian and British. Australians are like, da 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 If I'm around that too much, even when I'm speaking English, I will start to do that. So the more you hear someone else's natural rhythm, the more you're going to be able to mimic it. So that's uh -huh. probably why you guys are both really good. Your your accents are so clear, and you speak in a good rhythm. Just keep refining it. Keep okay. practicing. Read with me if you want to. If I'm reading and you want to read with me, I don't mind. Go crazy. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <fun. laughs>
<laughs> that was just hilarious. Okay. We have 15 minutes to talk about ice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, I know. Ice is riveting. It's, it's a riveting topic. All right. Let's see. Going back up here. Going back to my lesson plan. How old are you, Chloe? Um, I'm 24 years old. Yay, I'm older than you. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you guys? I'm 26. Oh. oh, I'm the oldest. I'm 38. Uh huh. Not fair. I like to be oldest. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, you're now 18. I'm, I've taken 20 of your okay, years away. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you're cool with it. Adelton, how old are you? Still no, nothing? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to keep trying. I'm I never 18. give up. Okay. I'm uh, 18. <laughs> oh, something is playing. Hold on. Oh, it's this. Shh. Okay. Okay, is chewing ice bad for you? Let's find out. Okay. <clears throat> Can I send us a link? Oh. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so out of it. There is a link. Okay, so we're going to read through this article. Oh, sorry. Really quickly, okay? Mm -hmm. We have 13 minutes to read this entire article and discuss it. So what we're going to do, since we're working on our pronunciation, is we're going to read this together. Can you guys handle that? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, if, you, if I lose you, I'm not stopping. You just better catch up, okay? <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. okay. I'm not going to read this little box, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Are you ready? Yeah. Is chewing ice bad for you? Almost everyone knows someone who is addicted to chewing ice. They crunch on ice cubes all day long. They get up in the middle of the night to chew ice. Where's my Where's my shadow? Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> There's okay. no Sorry. echo. <laughs> Sorry, I was waiting for you guys. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm, I'm going to keep going. Uh -huh. They have favorite they have ice cream favorite trays and go out of their way to get ice from specific places. They literally go crazy literally if they can't get ice. Maybe you're one of them. Maybe one of them. Why do people chew ice? Why do people chew ice? I can't laugh or else I can't read like a normal person. Okay, ice chewing is called package. <laughs> I don't know that word. I had to stop. And <laughs> it's one specific type of medical condition. People who think I have a compulsive desire to eat things that have no nutritional value, such as ice cream or cornstarch, or even things that aren't good at all, like clay, dirt, chalk, or paint. Compared with gnawing on pencil erasers or peeling the paint off the baseboards, chewing on a little ice doesn't seem all that bad, does it? Nonetheless, it can signal a medical problem. As with other forms of ego, the compulsion to chew ice is often a sign of severe eye deficiency. I can't do it. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's impossible. <laughs> my face hurts because I was trying so hard not to laugh. <laughs> my face actually hurts. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm coming down. <clears throat> Shake it off. Loosen up the cheeks. Loosen them back up. Okay. <laughs> All right, somebody else has got to take the lead. I'm gonna shadow. I'm gonna shadow someone else. Um, Mark, you start. Start with uh, people with Pika. You start there, and Chloe and I are gonna shadow you. Oh, okay? where where is it? Um, the second the second sentence in the paragraph. Why do people chew ice? So Mark, start there, and we're gonna shadow you. Okay. 
People with Zika have a compulsive desire to eat things that have no nutrition value, such as ice or cornstarch, or even or things, even that, things that, that aren't food <laughs> put at all. See, I like can't cold. shadow you because I'm I read at a at yeah. a faster pace. Yeah. Okay, all right, I can do this, guys. Are you? Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna get through the whole article with you guys talking about <laughs> You know what it is? You guys are so good at keeping up, it's throwing me off. Like, <laughs> like usually like when people shadow, they're so far behind that I don't really hear them, but you guys are saying the word right behind me. I'm like, ah! <laughs> I just said that. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I'm ready. So, compare with gnawing on pencil erase. Oh, we read this. Where are we? <laughs> We're here. Okay. <laughs> As with other forms of pica, the compulsion to chew ice is often a sign of severe iron deficiency. That's probably why so many women report developing an ice chewing habit during pregnancy. Because iron needs are very high, very high pregnant women commonly develop iron deficiency. Another group of people that are at high risk of iron and other nutrient deficiencies are those who have gastric bypass because the size of the stomach is so drastically patients can eat only very small amounts of food, which obviously limits the amount of nutrients they can take in. Plus, take it. their ability to digest food their ability and absorb nutrients is greatly impaired. impaired. That, by the that, way, is just way, one reason why I believe that you know, find that should be used only as a last resort, that it comes to by much more intensive emotional therapy and support than it usually is. Oh. <laughs> wow, <laughs> you guys, I need, I need a hat so I can take my hat off to you. I wish I had a hat. Hold on. I, I'm, I'm tipping an imaginary hat. This is me tipping my hat to you. You guys are amazing. Okay. Whew. Okay, I cannot keep doing that because I'm laughing way too hard. All right, Chloe, can you read the paragraph, What Do Food Cravings Mean? All by yourself. You, you give the paragraph to yourself. Oh, I lost to where we are. Um, the subheading, what do food cravings mean? Oh, yeah. Start reading? Yeah. You get to read it by yourself. I'm not going <laughs> to, sh I won't shadow you. <laughs> well, but Mark. Mark, you can shadow. Shadow me, please. Okay, I'll try. <laughs> Mark. Okay, okay. All right. <laughs> okay, if you're start. Persistent ice cure, you should definitely consider anemia. Many people Many find people that if they that correct the iron deficiency, the craving for ice goes away. Ice goes away. Some people say Some that people when you that have when a you craving have for a certain food, food, it's a sign that your body needs the nutrients in the food. But ice is not a good source of iron or other nutrients. <laughs> so, all so, the tree eyes is likely to cause anemia. It's and certainly not going to cure it either. Another reason that you might get to a tragic tragic if you are anemic is that anemia can you make your tongue and gums sore or cause a burning sensation in your mouth, which chewing eyes can help to relieve. Yay! <laughs> you guys are good. Okay, we are almost. Oh, I don't know if we can finish the whole article. Yeah, it's too long. Okay, we'll do one more paragraph, but this time, Mark, I want you to read, and I want you to shadow him, Chloe. So, what do food cravings? Oh wait, we just did that one. What should you do if you crave ice? So just read the first paragraph, Mark. Okay. If you are a compulsive ice cure. Hello. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> where, where is the shadow? <laughs> yeah. Can you say? Can you serve that again, please? Okay. <laughs> If you are a compulsive ice chewer, it is highly likely that you are suffering from iron deficiency and anemia. It's vitally important to check with your doctor to see whether you have treatment for that. Many people find that once they correct their iron deficiency, their craving for ice goes away. Other medical conditions or medications can cause dry mouth. So, so if you chew ice because so your mouth if you chew ice your because your mouth dry. always feels Check dry, check with your doctor about that too. You guys are the uh, best so. ever. <laughs> okay, you both. I will. I'm just gonna say this before class is over. You both really genuinely have the rhythm. 
You Aww. really do. You've got <laughs> rhythm, baby. You got it. <laughs> so just keep just keep going. And for both of you, because you are more advanced students, take the advanced classes and please take the role playing classes because those it's really hard for mm -hmm. students when they're first starting because there's so much pressure. Because yeah. you have, you, there's no script. You're not reading. You just have to think on the spot. I give you a role. You got to do it. I don't mm -hmm. think you guys will have any trouble with it, and it's gonna help you. It you, you'll learn slang and idioms mm -hmm. and phrasal verbs, and you're gonna get really. It's fun. Mm -hmm. I did. Awesome. I did one the other week. I had one yesterday, but I didn't have anybody in that class, so I didn't get to do it. It was a bank robbery. It was gonna be hilarious. But I did one the other day. It was a mock trial, so we had a court case. It was yes. hysterical. All types of things came out in the court case. So take the role-playing classes. Take. I don't think either of you guys are really at intermediate. At the very least, you're high intermediate to advanced. I would put you both in the advanced range. So uh -huh. okay. make sure you're taking the advanced classes because you're going to spend more time doing this and yeah. less time reviewing the grammar, which mm -hmm. I don't think is really as necessary for you. So, mm -hmm. I'm bumping you up. <laughs> yeah. You guys did. I, I'm sorry, we don't really have time to discuss the article. It was just more fun to read it. <laughs> but if you are craving ice, or if you know someone who is, they should probably go see a doctor because it usually is a sign of some type of deficiency. Or if you're mm -hmm. craving chalk or clay, or I know people who have eaten dirt because they crave it so much, like especially when mm -hmm. they're pregnant. They'll crave something really weird. Tell if it's you or somebody else. Tell them to go see a doctor because usually what's happening is that you're missing some kind of mineral or vitamin or nutrient in your body, and your body is craving it from a weird source. So, mm. if you have weird food cravings, you might want to go get a checkup because it could mean that you are deficient. So that's mm -hmm. the lesson. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I had a blast. You guys are awesome. Chloe, it was yeah. so nice to meet you. Come me back too. and see me, please. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions for me before we end the class for today? No, no. That is no. awesome. As usual. Mm -hmm. Thank you okay. Thank I you will, so much. <laughs> I will say um, every at the end of all my classes, if I can remember, which I'm not great at, I always like to give an idiom or an expression uh -huh. at the end of cool. all of my classes because I want you guys to start using them. This week yeah. I have been giving two. So mm -hmm. first is you know and like. So this is very American. So if you want to sound American, you can do this. This is not British or Australian or Canadian. This is American. So you know, I was like, go into the store and it was like five miles away and you know it was like we, that's what we say so whenever we're trying to think of the next thing we're about to say mm -hmm. we fill the gap with you know and you it know. was like you know um, oh what's their name oh you know um, oh you know <laughs> that is what we do <laughs> it's our go-to phrase if we can't uh -huh. think of our words uh -huh. so use it and then yeah. our last one is okay. There's this, and I don't I don't curse, so I'm going to be giving you guys the edited version of it because I personally just don't curse. Okay, so laughing my butt off. Everybody knows that expression, LMBO or LMAO. Yeah. In English, you can do anything your butt off. If you do something your butt off, it just means you're doing it really hard. So I can work my butt off. I can talk <laughs> my butt off. <laughs> I can sleep my butt off. <laughs> okay, so if you end an action with my butt off, you do something your butt off, it means that you did it really hard, like full throttle, super intense. I ran my butt off. I Did you study for your test? Man, I studied my butt off. It means you studied really, really hard. Uh, cool. We use it all the time. So if you are somebody who does like to use um, curse words or profanity, I personally don't, but it's up to you. Then you would say, like, um, I worked, and I'm going to type it because I don't say it. That's what it actually is. I worked my ass out. Yeah. 
So I don't use that word, but it's not like a super, it's not like one that when people hear, it's not like the F word. People yeah, aren't going to jump back. Yeah, they use a lot of awarding idioms, right? Yeah. They use that a lot. Yeah, so if you want to use it, it's not it's not terrible. I just personally don't curse, so I don't mm -hmm. I don't teach it that way. But oh, I want you guys you know. to focus on using you know and like like and fillers. I love cursing in English. <laughs> <laughs> That's not my language. <laughs> I don't I don't I'm not a curser. I don't I don't like to curse. I don't like to use profanity. But if you do, Mark then you would use the second version. So you can do anything <laughs> you're bleep off. So whenever you want to tell somebody you did something really hard, it's like, man, I studied my butt off. It's because I really studied hard. And whenever you can't think of the next word you want to say, fill it with like and you know. And you will be totally American. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that is all for this class. Oh, oh thank you. Yeah. Goodbye, you guys. Thank you for coming thank to you. class today. Thank bye you. Bye. Talk to you later. Bye. See you soon. Bye. bye, -bye.